we're live. We never have a choice. Are you sharing? I'm sharing. Yes. Okay. You're, you're supposed to be talking while we're sharing. Oh I'm yeah, sharing. that's right. I have to share too. There are certain people that I have to share too. I have to share to the group. I mean, it's not like you ever share to the group. I don't have to share it to the group. They know where it's at. <laughs> I know where it's at. I know you know where it's at. All right. So today's like Monday. And it's almost May, you guys. <sighs> Yay. For those, yeah. For those of us that have kids, are we ready? For school to be out? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I am. 100%. I am too. I like when I go do things this summer. Mm -hmm. I don't want to sit around the summer. I like having the kids out of school, to be honest. I do too. It's so nice to wake up to kids in chaos. And <laughs> I don't have too many years left with mine at home, so I'm totally fine with them being home. I'm you excited. Are fine. And, you know, this really was going to be the summer that I was going to go and do some traveling and do some things. It's also the summer, of course, that fuel prices decided to take a big jump. Right. So but I'm still going to try to do some of those things. We'll see. You know, I'm I'm st I'm thinking about just packing up the kids and doing it. Mm -hmm. And just saying, let's go. Let's just. I think being locked in the house and not being able to go out and see anybody, Adrian and I went on that trip. Um, I went to go see the kids and then that's all, that's all I've really been able to do. Well, uh, Adrian, we made two trips. Yeah. Yeah. Two trips, mm -hmm. but that's not a lot. No, we almost died on one of them. And then we took another one. <laughs> Had so much yeah. fun. You decided to do it again. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, we had See, men across the United States looking at the map for us because we couldn't see nothing. There was tornadoes all around us. Really? Yeah. You want to talk? Okay. So this is today's show. Everybody, this is Jen. And this is Adrian. I'm Jan. <laughs> today's friend. Today's show is about friendship. So you want to talk about a bonding experience. <laughs> Here we are. We're on our way back from our last trip. We have Abby in the back seat, and Abby's na 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 na. <laughs> Adrian, and I'm looking over, and I'm like, Adrian, there's a tornado, and she is, Shh, no, there's not. I'm like, ah, dude, that's a tornado. <laughs> We're in the middle of Texas, nowhere, Texas. Mm -hmm. Adrian goes, no, we're good, we're good. We were like, good. We were good. Yeah, we were at the time. And I went, okay, nope, we're not good. And she looks over, she's, oh, hell, no, we're not good. <laughs> oh, I think I remember seeing some of those pictures that you guys posted. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then sitting in that Dairy Queen, here we are, we're trucking across this, like, street with Avelina, and we're looking at the car, we're going, what do we do? You know, we yeah. were on the phone with everybody trying to get information on what's going on. Half of the people don't answer and the other half are trying to figure out, you know, what's happening. And one of them's going through a, their own tornado and didn't tell us. So, yeah, here we are in this Dairy Queen and I'm looking at Adrian like, you're going to be the last person I see. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> like this is, the, this is the scene out of every movie like you've ever, <laughs> ever pictured like dying in a tornado and here you are small town middle of nowhere your car's across the street there's a river flooding between you and then you have the toddler so did you just ride it out in the Dairy Queen yeah. oh yeah we did Abby provided us with song and dance too because as it yeah. started raining she goes it's raining it's pouring and then she stopped <laughs> And she yeah. looks over to Adrian and she's, oh, no, that's not right anymore. <laughs> row, row, row your boat. Oh, Everybody. no. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But, yeah, we, we made it out of there. I just, oh, that was, that was pretty wicked. That was a bonding wow. experience. You know, it's yeah, one thing. I, I called home and he said, you need to come home and make me some money. So you probably better figure out how to get here. I said, oh. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah no, mine was at work and he goes, uh, you'll be fine. You know what to do. From our husbands. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. <laughs> but our paranormal family was the ones that were like, hey, hey, this you need to go this way. You need to go this way. Jeremy was on there. Take this road. No, it's right there. It's right there. You can't take that road. Then I'm like, I know somebody with a better radar. Hold on. Okay, we're calling this person. And he's going, no, don't go there. Go here. And we're oh. going, this is the way we're, way we're going. So, oh, man, it was bad. Hi, it was Shannon. I wanted to show you what I had today. Shannon made this for me. Oh, Isn't it beautiful. I need to see <laughs> I love it. There we go. Have you ever almost died with a friend? Oh, many times. Oh. <laughs> Most of those were in my younger days, though. We don't talk about those anymore. <laughs> the only thing I could think of is the only person, you know, that's going to make it out of this is going to be Avelina. <laughs> And she's going to be like the one standing in the middle of the road, looking around like, yeah, I did this. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Now, where do I go? Now, where do I go? What do I do? Where's oh, my, man. oh man, where's, where's Adrian? Where's my Adrian? <laughs> Hi, Amy. Yeah, oh. no, it's, uh, that was, uh, we debated on spending the night or, moving on in and i tell you what it was gone by then but then there was trucks that had been blown off the road and it was it was not pretty yeah it was terrifying we we drove by one of the towns and i went adrian they have no power and then i went where's the town <laughs> where's the town <laughs> and she's going we're just going to keep driving <laughs> And I'm like, yes, we are. We we have a kid in the car. We have other other people that we need to go home to. We just need to keep driving. But I, it's a good thing that we didn't stay the night because there was another round of storms that went through and we would have been right in the line with them. So just we followed our gut instinct just to keep going and just make the truck home. It was. It was and blessed. Abby was, she didn't cause, argue, fight, cry the whole trip. No. She was like, can I have a snack? <laughs> not concerned one bit no 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 like you guys got this like whatever we'll be fine yeah i wish i had her confidence some days i really do yeah Seriously. we were in a place where there was all windows nothing but windows so yeah, she, yeah we'd have to go in the freezer she was watching she was watching everything just wild just she thought it was the coolest thing in the world and i'm thinking oh no Oh no, no, this is, this is not my child because now we're going to, we're going to be on adrenaline rush. She's going to be a storm chaser. No, no. We decided we'd just eat and hang out till it was done. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, I've never been in a tornado and I hope I never am. Oh, I'm from Kansas. I'm used to it. Oklahoma. Wind is one of wind is just one of the elements that I just I don't like. I don't like it. Like you can rain on me, you could snow on me, but I just don't like the wind. And I don't know what it is, but I don't like the wind at all. I don't like I don't like heavy wind. I really don't. Um heavy wind terrifies me. Right after Nate was born, we had a hammerhead storm hit Appleton. Actually, it hit central Wisconsin. And that's where it's just a straight line wind that blows through. And I was living in the middle of Appleton at the time. And this tree, I watched it just literally uproot and just walk across the street. Like it was running down the street just straight up. And I'm thinking that tree's a hundred years old, <laughs> you know, and I had roofers that were flying off of my roof because we lived in a duplex. And I'm telling you, Nate was only a couple of weeks old and Ed was working in the next town over, he was working in Green Bay. And I called him and I said, we're gonna die, I love you. And he goes, what, <laughs> we're gonna die, I love you. And he goes, everything will be fine, typical man. And uh, all of a sudden he was, he was gone and we were on a cell phone. There was no cell phone signal, there was no nothing. And my duplex was rocking. And my neighbor came home five minutes later after the storm had passed. And he was panicked. He was he was running up the stairs, making sure that the roof hadn't collapsed in on us, that we were okay. 
I mean, I thought that that I it just it was terrifying. I I don't like wind. I don't. Yeah, I don't like wind either. You live in the wrong place. Me? <laughs> I live in New Mexico. Exactly. The land of wind. That's why it entrapped you. It's like a box wind. That's why we have the world's <laughs> largest balloon fiesta. It's because we have the box winds in Albuquerque, and it just traps you. You know, you're just you're screwed. That's why you make a left, not a right in Albuquerque. That's where Bugs Bunny always got it wrong. <laughs> what? Tell, tell us this, uh, this, this, this premise you've been working on all week. Friendship bonds. And, it's huge. What have you learned? What have I learned? Okay, so Aeropostle is really cool. He, uh, going with this? Do what? How far back are we going with this? There's, there's like, there's three stages of friendship. And what's funny is I swear if I don't have my notes because Avelina took them. You're going to have to use your brain. Let's go. <laughs> so you have different, you have different types of friendship. Okay. You have your young friendships. Your young friendships, those are the bonds. You know, those are your, your ones that when you're younger in your teenage years, this is most of our friendships, even now in our adult life, they're your friends that you have common interests, common likes, and, uh, you get along really well. They don't oppose you very much. They don't question you. And these are great friends because they help you identify yourself and they make you feel included into everything. Then you have your first stage of friends in your adult life, and that's your usefulness friends. And those friends, you can take them or leave them. It doesn't make a difference. It's they're the ones that are there just for a purpose, and then that's it. It's That's your acquaintance. Um, what we strive for in life is the good ones. It's the goodness friendship. And the goodness friendship is huge. Um because most people don't know that they have it until it's gone. And that's your friends that will have your back always. They'll, they'll do anything for the betterment of you. They encourage you. They challenge you in ways that are not necessarily competitive, but they challenge you to grow. And those are the friendships that we need. We need those friendships that, you know, I can call up somebody and be like, okay, is this, is this crazy? <laughs> and, and have them go, yeah, it is. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Have them tell you the truth, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and challenge, and like challenge the way that, that we're thinking. And that's one thing that I really um, enjoy about our friendship is that we don't always have to agree on things. We don't always see things the very same way. We have very different methods in our work. Um, like different, you know, methodologies, but none of that really, that doesn't matter. Like we can still um, talk about it, right? We can still talk about it. And at the end of the day, it's okay um, if one of us sees something in a different way. And so right. I, I love that. I love not feeling like, well, if I don't agree with what they're saying, then um, like Jan's not going to be my friend or Adrian's going to be mad because I really don't, I know that you're not going to. And so for me, it's really refreshing to be able to um, talk about those things like openly and honestly and get some honest feedback on them. And right. sometimes we learn something from it. Yeah. And, and it's not necessarily to change my perspective or for me to change your perspective. Um, it's just this open like honest communication about the way that we feel about things. And to me, that is awesome. Zero judgment too. Yeah. I, I think that that's the most important thing about our friendship. The three of us, there is zero judgment, hundred percent honesty though. There's just that honest. And I won't say I, we all have our different versions of how we're honest. I think I'm like the brutal in your face. This is, <laughs> Wait, I feel kind of judged about my frosting, though. <laughs> yeah, Adrian's 
Adrian's honest in the, yeah, what, what do you expect? You know, honest type of response. Like, well, did you paint the room red? Well, then why didn't you think it was going to come out red? <laughs> <laughs> That's Adrian. Like, what did you expect? <laughs> and, and here's Jen. Jen's like, how do I put this delicately? <laughs> I, I, I just, I think that's amazing. And we need that. Um, we need each type of honesty. And I, I love how we can be honest with each other. And that's, that's one thing. And that's what I want to touch on and why I wanted to do the show is because I think our friendship is amazing. I think it's very think unique. So. You know, what's um, really neat though. Think back. You, you brought up school younger friends i need to switch my children huh okay <laughs> it just now dawned on me okay remember when you were in school if there was two you were fine if there was four you're okay right when there's three somebody has got a problem somebody's <laughs> going to the other one talking or somebody's going to the other one and talking you know, I, I just realized that I think us three are the first ones that we haven't had that ever. No, because that that's my thing is we touched on it in the first show is I have a massive crazy nerve disorder that affects my moods and it affects me. Mm -hmm. And I need people that talk behind my back. That sounds crazy, but <laughs> well, I'm clarify that. Clarify that. I am going to clarify it because that does not sound good. <laughs> it doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound good at all. But it's a, it's, <laughs> if, if I pull, okay, if I pull you, Adrian, aside and I go, okay, there's something wrong with Jen. Right. Yeah. Is that really talking bad? No. That's that talking no. before we approach her. Right. It's it's okay. Like, is it just me or is there something off? You know, I'm really worried about her. She's, you know, this, she's that. How do we approach her about this? But we always approach the person and that other person knows that we've already talked about it. There is no, there is no hiding the fact that we've already talked about it. And the thing is, is I think what's unique about our situation is we're open about it. We are so open about it that it's beautiful. It really, really is. Well, and I think the thing is yeah. like, if we go back to um, what you were talking about, Jan, there's times when, um, you know, Adrian and I have talked, um, but it's, it's only been out of concern. It's like, how can we best support Jan right now? What do you think? What's the best thing um, that we can do in this situation? And sometimes we come to the conclusion that it's, we just need to back off right now. Um, because Jan just needs to have her space and it's something that like, she'll, she'll, she'll be back. She'll come back around. Um, so those conversations never have any ill will or any ill no. intent behind them. And so I think that's something that we're all comfortable with. If you guys are talking about something about me, um, I, it doesn't concern me because I know that the intent behind it, um, is it's always, no there's will. no ill will behind, behind that at all. Right. Um, and that so is, I think we're all comfortable in that. And not too many people can be, especially females. That's, right. Yeah. That's something that, you know, it's, oh my gosh, that one looks better than me. Or, oh my gosh, this one speaks better than I do. Or, you know, it's constant, constant trying to one up the other. And that's not what this is ever. Oh, absolutely not. And I, and see, and that's, that's, that's the huge thing is, I mean, I support each one of you so much in your decisions, whether or not I say may agree with your decision, I will support you in your decision. Right. You know, I will love you in that decision. And I will say, if that's what you want to do, let's do this. I'll support you. If it doesn't work out, this is plan I got a backup plan. <laughs> yeah. We got a plan B, you know, um, you know, it's, can I say it? I mean, we've talked about it. I mean, you guys, have you guys mentioned it? I don't know what you're talking about, but okay. Jen, Jen and her counterpart. What about them? 
I don't know. I don't know what you're going to talk about. I don't about. know if you made an announcement because I mean, I'm super proud about it. So I just want to brag about it. Oh, um, no, we haven't that official yet. No, okay. but you, but we can talk about it. Like it's totally fine. It's not like it's a big secret or anything. Okay. Okay. So you know, like she was not going to watch. I was like, you know what? I was like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm down. Like, I can't wait. I'm so super excited for this. And this is another aspect of friendship. You know, Jen's coming out with a new show and her partner in this show. I support him just as much, man. I love it. I love watching them. They're amazing together. Their bond, their friendship, their energy is just freaking amazing together. And so we have our show, but it's not like we're, I'm going, well, whatever. We're going to be better than her. <laughs> God, I hope not. You know, like, but some people get like that. They get really just <coughs> and they get yeah, really lost. If they don't yeah. support each other half as much as they try to tear each other down. <laughs> We'd be a lot better off. We would be. Yeah, absolutely. And your support, like both of you, means the world to me because I, I actually remember having this conversation. I did get a message, somebody asking me if I would be interested in it. And I think I went straight to you, Adrian, right? And I was like, what? What is this about? You already knew, right? <laughs> so that's one of those conversations where, where there's the talking going back behind, but you already knew what it was about. Um, so me, I'm anyway, that, I'm like, that was interesting. That, I don't know if should not right now. I said, I don't know that you should right now. <laughs> I'm thinking of her. The worst she can say is no. That's okay. 100% uh, like supportive of it and encouraging. And I have to say that there's actually been a lot of people, um, a lot of people that have been, have been encouraging me to go forward and to do this. And I have a hard time. I don't know what it is. Um, but I really do have a kind of a hard time in this format reading, right? And doing what I do. It's so different. Like I prefer to do um, when it comes to my mediumship, like the one-on-one, -on -one, the private. So, uh, so sometimes it's always awkward for me to get up, you know, and do a live. So I love having uh, Michael with me because it kind of offsets that a little bit. It makes me feel a little bit more comfortable in those awkward moments where there's nothing really to say. Um, and we do have a very good uh, dynamic together when we read. So I'm excited that we're, you know, we, we had a blast when we did it before. So I'm excited oh. to be, to be doing it again. I tell you what, I seriously would just grab my coffee and I would sit down and be like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, just yeah, what, we're, we're happening today. Like, I just, <laughs> I, I just want to sit back and I just want to watch, like, I just want to see what happens, you know, and it was just, I, I, I just love your show. I loved your guys' Thank show. You. I just, I love the both of you, and I just adore him. Adore him. I, he's just the here. We were talking about him today. You know, I just, I think he's great. I think his mediumship is amazing. I think his that work is amazing. Really is. And as a male coming <laughs> out as a medium is is sometimes really hard because it's more of a female thing. Um, yeah, I just think it's really cool. I don't know. I just love his energy. I just... <laughs> and what's good about both being together is if one's picking up something, the other's usually picking it up also, or it goes to the other one where yeah. one is, is trying to figure out what's going on, what's being said. The other one can talk. Okay. So that actually leads me into my next thing. And that that's friendship in the mediumship world. And that is a completely different level of friendship That's that so competitive and people just get nasty nasty and yes. me so i have a quote excuse me okay and actually she'll probably watch this later but uh i told it to holly once she was struggling with something and and it was with a friend and I just started laughing and I said, honey, I said, just because it may not be your shade of lipstick doesn't mean it doesn't look good on someone else. Yes. With that being said, just because I may not get along with so-and-so doesn't mean that I'm going to be upset that you get along with so-and-so. 
just because, I mean, well, let's look at us. We have one blonde, you know, we have one brown hair and, you know, Jen decided to go dark, you know. <laughs> Well, I couldn't do the gray anymore. I was over it. Like, <laughs> no, gray. Oh, wait, never mind. What? It's what? My, hair is a, my hair is just a changing, like it changes all the time, but <laughs> might be different next time you see me. Who knows? <laughs> but say your shade of lipstick doesn't match, you know, what Adrian can wear. You know, but I might be able to wear that shade of lipstick. And maybe we can get along with somebody and you're like, okay, I don't know how you do it, but you know, you're, you do it. You know, I support you. I love you, yes. but there's never any bitterness. No. Does that make sense? It does make sense. And the other thing um, that I really appreciate is there's none of this. Um, well, if you are friends with them, you can't be friends with me. Mm -hmm. uh, never, ever. That's the kind of stuff that we see in those earlier friendships, right? The junior high, the grade school kind of kind of friendships. Um, unfortunately, some of that actually comes over into adult friendships. But that's something that we've never, ever had to worry about, ever. And I appreciate that so much. I love how we can be. That's the honesty part. That's the zero judgment. That's the loving us right. where we're at. No, that's the trust. Because the reason people get that way is because you know that other person doesn't like you. And your friend is over there talking to them. If you trust your friend, it's not going to matter what they're talking about. But if you don't, that's where jealousy comes in. They're like, well, what'd they say about me? What would you say? Right. Now, we had that. In our friendship early on, two years ago, we had that. We had a lot of jealousy. We had a lot of rival when we when we look in the paranormal world that we were all in. And it really rocked our friendships hard. And but here's one thing Jen always says, just come back. Yeah. Just come back. You know? So we even though we all had to step away, it's not like we stepped away from forever. We just had to brush off that energy. We had to recharge. And I think as, as mediums, um, each one of us in our own right, I think we understand that. And I think that's amazing about our friendship. And look at us, we came back and here we are. And where's everybody else? <laughs> in their own little world doing their own little thing and that's okay <laughs> and I, i'm okay with it you know i'm happy for, i'm happy let them be and let them be i love them where they're at you know that if that's what they want to do that's what they want to do i just had a different route i just wanted to go a different way i just saw my i didn't see myself part of that anymore it's part of growing I yeah i i grew from that like oh no you know what Oh, I don't think I like that. You know, let's, let's try something else. Let's let's do a different route. <laughs> let's rebalance this and let's rethink about this. And and it is, it's a growing experience. And and we went through a huge one early in our friendship. And but my trust in you guys, and that's what it was. Throughout that whole entire ordeal, it was nothing but trust between Jen and I, between you and I, Adrian. Adrian, you trusted Jen. Jen trusted you. We trusted each other as individuals and as each other's friends mm -hmm. to know that nobody was doing anybody harm. Yeah. Does that make sense? Where we could be yes. honest with the three of us and sit down and have those hard conversations. There's not too many people you can do that with, honestly. No. Um, even, I mean, there's people in the paranormal world uh, are friends outside of that we do anything in the world for they need help we're there that, that's mm -hmm. hard but that doesn't mean you're going to have that level of trust with them or that level of openness without judgment because usually you don't no and that's one thing that i think is the beauty with us and i might cry when i say this is because i don't let a lot of people in to see who i am on the inside. I I don't let people see how I work with energy. And when it comes down to it, you two are the only two that I feel comfortable with. 
that I trust that I can go, okay, is this really happening? <laughs> like, is this really going on? Can, can you guys walk me through this? Is I need help, you know, and that's, that's huge for me to ask for help because I'm an independent person and I'm independent in my energy work and I'm independent in my mediumship. But with you guys, I feel comfortable letting you into my energy. That's Jen and I had an incident where, you know, I needed her and she was right there. You and I have had our, we had our moment at the temple where we needed each other and we guided each other and we helped each other. And that's important. Oh, yeah. That's important. You know, that guiding and that friendship. Jen, oh my God. What are you picking up on? <laughs> Do you see this? It walk across your face and it is it, like, I watch just move across your face. And like, you see my scribbles? Thrown me Nothing, off. because that's not what this show is about. So I'm just, I know. You know, I know. Like I'm just letting the energy go. Actually, what but I was I, thinking about. Me. <laughs> Honestly, you brought up you brought up that um, when when uh, Jenny, you needed me, and that that whole thing just kind of kept coming back to me. It just kind of came in. Um, what happened? I was actually seeing it again. Um, mm -hmm. So that that's all it was. So it was just kind of just scribbling a little bit um, because that moment almost brings tears to my eyes still. So it's just something that I was just kind of. Like they're not You're even talking hurting. about the other moment. They're just scribbles. I'm talking. I'm talking about the moment. Yeah. Yeah. The bar. Yeah. Okay. The bar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So just a second. Um, <coughs> Danny got home today. He's home this morning. Yes, Danny. I'm glad that you're home. Um, apparently they fed him good, but uh, yeah, he's home. He's I. I don't know how he does it, but. He's been on his pages already welcoming people. Go back to bed. <laughs> Can't keep a good man down. Yeah, no. Uh, no. So that moment was huge for me. I know that moment was huge for you, Jan, because you had to ask for her. Because like you said, you don't like to ask for help. Like that, that was a hard moment to actually uh, trust and lean in and know that I would have you in that moment. Um, but it was a huge moment for me, too, because you trusted me to do that. And that was such a, um, an experience and such a bonding, like, like moment, the energy in that moment was insane. So intense. It was so intense. It, and it was what, crazy. And what I see off of it, and Adrian and I have talked about this, is that moment between you and I created such a different energy strand for you and I that when you needed me in a moment, I was able to instantly be right there with yeah. you in that moment and, and to give you that hug and to tell you, I love you. It's going to be okay. Right. Because I couldn't be there with you physically, but we already had that energy bond. And that moment brings tears to my eyes because as a mom, yeah, it's important to me to be there for you in that moment. And then with Adrian and I, we've, we've had our moment and we had that at the temple and that was, that was on such a whole different level. Like I am, <laughs> I, that, that was, that was like you and I like that, that it was, it's that in it, that energy changed between Adrian and I, and it created that bond and it, it locked us into place. And to be able to be with her in those first moments and with those steps and, and to, to, to help her. Help my butt. It was <laughs> That was so cool. It was just so cool to watch Adrian like blossom. Like all of a sudden, like she's just standing there in the middle of the ballroom. And I, I, I've never talked about this moment. I don't she's, even... she's just standing there though. And I'm going to go into detail, detail. Um, 
but she's just standing there and she's like, yeah, let's do this. I'm like, all right, let's go. And she's standing there. She goes, um, <laughs> what, 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 what? Oh, oh no, no. Oh, oh, like it was just like a child for the first time. Like looking at the birthday party, they imagined with that magical pony sitting right in the middle, you know, they're like, yeah, you know, daddy got us that pony, you know, regardless that it's just rented. No, um, <laughs> you got a I think what was her. fun about that too, was that after, after that experience, and I got to work one-on-one -on -one with Adrian for a while, lit in yes. a different capacity, um, because all of a sudden there was all of this whole new world kind of opened up for her, right? And she didn't quite know, like, where do I, what, what do I do with this? Where do I go with this? <laughs> so then, yeah, so I'm just like, you know, you should go talk to Jen. So, so like, said, I'm like, the initial, like, I gave you, you know, I delivered, you know, Jen. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, I don't, I don't do the education part, you know, no, I can't explain it in terminology. I just know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's uh <clears throat> and that's where your guys' bond comes in. You know, you two have a bond. And I'm sure that there was a there's been a moment between you two that I may not even know about that where you guys went, Oh. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I know what it I know what it was. Okay, you don't have Alzheimer's, so tell me. <laughs> <laughs> my first my my first huge breakdown yeah i think that you're probably right yeah when my depression hit, <laughs> yeah um, and i i disconnected from everything my phone i disconnected my facebook yeah. i shut down and i just couldn't I couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't breathe. I was suffocating and the world yeah. was collapsing in on me. And we were extremely worried. Um, but yeah, I remember having that. I, I do. I remember having that talk then. And I remember saying like, uh, look, I just, I, I just have to step away. I remember telling Adrian that like, I just have to step away. Um, and I will leave this door open. And when she's ready, She'll step back through it. She'll come back. Um, and so that's what we did. See, and I don't, I think with me, with you guys, I think I can step away and I feel comfortable coming back because there, there is that no judgment uh, and there is that love, but that bond with energy that we have. I know you guys are right there. It's not just us. Let's let's go a little deeper into this. Your grandma. That 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 that, that doesn't go away. Your cousin does not go away. <laughs> see, and well, see, that's 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 the other cool thing with us working in mediumship. Um, I think we enhance each other's friendships that way also, and I think we enhance each other's mediumships. We love I, we learned it. Yeah, we I learned from Jen and I learned from Adrian. And I just think that I can't do what Jen does. Oh no, we're not supposed to. We're, we're not supposed to, right? But what I think is cool is that when Jen is overwhelmed with something, okay, so like when we were at the temple and everything happened at the temple. What did I do? I went, you know what? I just need Jen in this moment. I didn't pick up the phone. I didn't call her. I didn't message her. No, I, somebody else was already doing that. No, I sat my butt down in the middle of the room and I literally Buddha'd it. Okay. And I went, I need Jen. <laughs> yeah, I did. I seriously, seriously did. Do you remember that, Adrian? You were sitting right there. I, and I was like, she's going to be the only one that can digest what the heck is going on. What happened the next day? Do you remember, Jen? I don't know. I No. Do you remember you scribbled? 
and you had oh a- yeah i had a whole and notebook full like, of stuff that night yeah, yeah. And you were like what the heck is all of this and i'm like oh thanks and i had the picture of the pink room it was in the pink room yes because i said what happened last night in the pink room because i had the notes of all that so i do remember that yeah like i felt something going on in the pink room with you and i remember writing it just yeah. writing all the stuff I was just like, I'm like, I'm done. Like, I can't do this. I'm on overload. I can't, I can't handle it. But Adrian does the same thing. Adrian sees my son. I can't see my son. Adrian can see my grandmother. These are people I can't see because I'm too close to the situation. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't know that they're not there. I feel them. And sometimes I do sense them and I see them and I hear them and I smell them and they do things, but Adrian's the one that's like, okay, now this is the one that's doing this. And I think that that's cool because it's like, all right, I can call Adrian and be like, Hey, Adrian, this is what's going on. But if it's a massive download and it's something that I may be working on and I can't digest it, Jen handles it. And I think that that's cool in the way that we balance each other out. And that's where there's no competition because we utilize each other's strengths. Yeah. There never needs to be ever. It, right. It's, it's not a matter of who's better. It's a matter of who can we help? You know, what's right. what? And, and with mediumship, one thing that I've learned is everybody works differently. Everybody has different strengths. Everybody um, can pick up, you know, just a little bit, a little bit differently. Mm-hmm. So got yeah i think that we we have to to use um you know whatever we can when we're when we're looking for answers it doesn't hurt my feelings at all if i don't have the answers and i'm not um too proud to say like you know what i don't know that part i don't understand that part it's not my greatest strength strength so you know maybe ask this person maybe ask that person that's how we learn right that's how we learn uh, when it comes to, even when it comes to like mentoring, mm-hmm. we, I believe that we need to have more than one mentor. doesn't mean that we have to believe everything that they say, um, or that we have to adopt everything that they do. It's just a matter of learning, right? We learn. And then what resonates with us, yeah. that's what we take in and that's what we use. And, but yeah. that being said, that's, that's what we have to give. And everybody has their own strengths to give. Carla, I learned that a long time ago that I can't do everything. I was going to say, I can't do it. I tried. I tried. Uh, I felt like when I first started this journey that I had to know everything and I had to do everything. And I was, I was failing if I didn't understand one, you know, an aspect of something. It took me, it took me about a year and complete and total burnout to realize that I needed to focus on one direction that I could still, you know, have these other things here if I wanted to do them. But if I wanted to excel, I needed to have some focus and I needed to have some direction and I needed to really excel there. And I needed to quit expending my energy on all of this other stuff. Um, So I always say just because we can do it doesn't mean that we should. I feel that we really, really have to to have that focus and we have to have that direction. Otherwise we're just strung out and, and we, we don't ever, we don't ever really learn and excel in, in in anything. We're just mediocre in all things. It's kind of the, you can half-ass everything and not do anything completely. Right. Right. Doing that. Yeah. And it doesn't complete everything and you don't feel whole. You don't feel, you don't feel fulfilled. Yes. But, and what's really cool about us is the fact that it, the, here comes the trust and the respect, and the foundation, because that's our foundation is just trust and respect. I don't have to know everything because I can just go to my Facebook and I can hit, oh, this chat that says Adrian and Jen and go, hey. <laughs> And then you guys go. Hmm. (laughs) You know, and then and then we go, well, let's go 
figure this out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know, but let me go ask this person I heard. And, you know, that's, that's, that's unity right there is zero, zero competitiveness between, you know, the, the three of us. There's well, I think, in a, yeah. And I think in our field, I think in the, in what we do, one of the most dangerous things that we can do is pretend like we know everything. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if somebody asks me something, I, I'm not going to just, I'm not going to grasp at straws and try to come up with something that sounds okay. Like if I don't know, I don't know. Um, and there's no shame in not knowing it doesn't make you any less of a medium or an investigator or whatever it is that you do. Um, I just think that it's, it's so important that you, everybody combines those resources, right? Combines those strengths because that's where the strength is. It's in the unity. Unity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's in that foundation. That foundation is, 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 is a unity of love and respect and understanding of we normalize each other. We, we really do. There, there's a normalization um, where, how do I want to put this? We validate each other. The world thinks we're crazy and, and no, <laughs> we are, <laughs> and we are, but that's okay because, you know, we're, we're like Charlie's angels. We're, we're just, you know, don't jump in. <laughs> but <laughs> not crazy. But we, I don't know. I, I, I hope that people can can form bonds like this. I don't think that they they know how anymore. I don't think we're taught how. I don't. We don't. I get so frustrated because it seems like people don't move out of the middle school phase. Well, here's where it's going to get a little bit. Uh, probably going to make some people mad, but that's okay. That's that's my job. Um, <laughs> Is the room red? Well, <laughs> is the paint red? It, it, <laughs> but uh, this is where we decide what do you want to normalize? Um, what, where do you draw that line of who you want around you? Where, who you want, you know, um, I don't care. Who's in a relationship with who. I don't care. Male, female, animal. I don't care. Right. But that doesn't mean they have to be around me doing it. You know, you, you want to mess with an animal, you go right ahead in your area. Yeah, you do oh, you do your boo. Don't let me know. Just don't let me know. Don't, 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 don't fill me in on that part. Right. So, you know, it's a matter of we are taught now. Well, we weren't, but our kids were that we have to accept everything. Doesn't matter what it is. You, you accept everything. Okay. That's fine. That doesn't mean you don't have to hate on somebody for what they do. You don't have to talk bad about what they do. But you don't have to have it right there in your home if that's what you don't want. That's to love them and leave them where they're at. Yeah. yeah and that's something that needs taught again. That That is. That's something that's huge. And that's, you know, well, and that goes with friendship, too. You know, how do you get rid of that toxic person? It's hard. It, it, it's hard to do. Because you do I, love them, you know, honestly, yes, It's hard because you do because you do love them. So that yeah, that that's the whole thing right there is um, I think that part of that honestly comes with age. Like I think it comes with knowing who we are and knowing what we will surround ourselves with and what we will not. Some of that just comes that wisdom just comes with age and that knowing just come like I, I think that we all know. I know that we all know. Um, if this person is a good person for us to be surrounding ourselves with or not. Um, but the, the other side of us kicks in, right? The, the emotions and the feelings, and I don't want to hurt their feelings side. Um, the empty side of us kind of kicks in and takes over our intuition and our knowing and they battle each other. Right. That's why we find ourselves in these toxic relationships. That's why we find ourselves loving people that we know without a doubt are toxic for us. And so then it creates this, you know, this situation that, that that's hard. But I think that the older we get um, and we start to recognize that right away uh, and we start to lean into that, into our intuition and not our feeling side, I guess, is, is how I want to say it. I know that sounds kind of kind of wrong and I don't mean it to sound like that. Like we're not like I mean, we're not cold, um, but 
but I think the more we know we grow to understand who we are um the more that we listen to what is good for us and yeah. i think that that some of that just comes with age we're calculated in our choices now yes it's, it's it's we don't i don't have a lot of time left on the face of the earth okay I, I, you know, it, I want to live. You're the youngest of this. You need to stop that right now. <laughs> I know, but I also have the, I have the, the, the <laughs> messed up nerve disorder. So I truly don't know how much time. You'll outlive us. I, I I none of us do though. Like really none, none of us, of us do. do. I, I just want to live. I just, I want to, I want to go with you three girls or you three girls. Oh my God. Yeah. Cause I'm thinking. <laughs> of See, we know this. Yeah, I, so when I say three girls, I go with the three girls. It's it's Abby is just <laughs> she's one of the girls. She's she's yeah, she's a resident evilness in a sweet <laughs> cute way. She's our distraction. She's our decoy. <laughs> um <laughs> but um I just want to go with you you ladies and just go hang out, go take the kids, go do something fun. You know, bring the kids on an investigation and just let them run wild. You know, go rent out a ghost town for a week and just let the family go have fun. You know, that I'd rather make memories like that now in my life Shannon. than to have to worry about who's talking to who. Yeah. You know, who's wearing what, who's going out with who right. you know well this person did this well per that person did that no i'm not saying that we're not catty like that because we can get catty because we're women don't even give me that look adrian this is honesty okay because no. i mean i'm ruthless i will admit it i am completely ruthless i will get down and i will find somebody and i will make fun of them and then i will send them a lot of love a lot of love. You tear people down just to do that. <laughs> they don't know I do. You know, like I just I'm a people watcher. Uh, yeah, that's that's different. That's okay. Like I'm a people watcher. Know. So you know, I'll I'll make fun of somebody and I'll pick on somebody without them ever knowing it, and then I'll send them a lot of love. You know, I think we have to do that as human beings, honestly, especially women. Like we. We have to be judgmental towards somebody. Does that make sense? <laughs> I love your honesty. <laughs> I, I guess we, we, like, we, I'm not judgmental towards you. I'm not judgmental towards her. But if you, <laughs> I am going to judge every ounce of your car. Yeah, you think you got a fast car. Yeah. <laughs> you want to see what I drive? Did you see what I'm driving? You just did what in front of me? You know, like, mm -hmm, yeah, you're on the phone. You're real smart. You know, that type of judgment. <laughs> yeah, well. No, no, no. Although some chick walks in wearing a hoochie mama stuff. Oh, my goodness. You best believe. you, Girl, you let the door open and you walk outside. Oh, you're a target, ma'am. You are a target. I am going to teach you how to self-respect yourself. You, you, it's a good thing you didn't know me 10 years ago because I didn't. Uh, you know what? I had it. I was showing it. I don't care. Because I knew I wouldn't have it forever. So. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. You'd walk in my door and I'd be like, really? Really? Yeah. I'd be like, yeah, I got it right now. 10 years from now, I'm not going to have it. So just leave me alone. <laughs> Daisy Boots in a bikini top. That is what I wore. The day after I had my baby, because I yeah, finally had a chest, so I could. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. So we we actually said we were going to do a game. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I okay see, Adrian missed that part of the conversation. It's in. It's in one of the chats. <laughs> what? What? Does it work? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It's not my fault you're an irresponsible adult who works. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't wave that magic. I'm going to wave that magic finger if you don't tell me what this game is. It's, um, are we doing the two truths and the one truth. lie? The truth. Yeah. Two this truths right. and one lie. So, you need to tell us two truths about yourself and one lie, Adrian. And we're going to try to see if 
the viewers and and uh, Jan and I know which one is the lie out of the three. Okay, since you all are going to take turns, okay, let me go last. You you all had time to prepare. No, okay, we're doing today. All right. Go, Jan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Two truths. What did I just do? Did not mean to do that. Sorry, Shannon. I got married when I was 16. I have lived in eight states. And I roughly can speak and understand somewhat five languages. You ready for me to tell you which one's the truth or which one's a lie? What Jen think? Okay. I think it's the States, Adrian. Is it the States? I don't think so. The languages? No, I, I know I know that you probably know those languages. I, I, I've got to say, I'm going with the States. When are you I'm going? going with got married at 16. It's the States. Yes. And <laughs> Hawaii, Colorado, <coughs> Washington. And Wisconsin. But I got married to Travis when I was 16. I knew him for four months. We were married 10 years, three kids. So I think that's pretty good. And uh, yeah, I understand more than five languages. I may not be able to speak them fluently, but if you speak to me in them, I'll, I'll be right. To. You can figure it out. I can figure it out. But yeah, if I'm cussing at you, you can you can get up to, you know, a handful of languages all at once. And if I go either to German or French, you're in trouble. <laughs> I, I don't hear what anybody says. says. <laughs> anything, anything in German just sounds mean to begin with. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and shut my mouth. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> All right. Go, Adrian. Oh, she said she wanted to go last. She was thinking. Do you want me to go? <laughs> All right, Jen. Okay. Um, I have five siblings. I have uh, hosted a TV show. And I eat my grilled cheese sandwiches with jelly. I <laughs> heard you eat your great, oh no. Which one's no. the lie? <laughs> I'm gonna go with the Worcester pickle and uh, vodka. <laughs> that was no. not. <laughs> I'm going to go with five siblings. Now, Jen has five siblings. Do you? <laughs> I don't know. What's Jan's answer? I have to say the peanut butter and jelly. I have four siblings. Four? Yes. There are five of us, so I have four siblings. And That's I do eat my grilled cheese with raspberry jelly. It's delicious. You need to try it. It's the best thing. <laughs> You know what? I'll just sit you next to Ed. He eats no, his just butter. try it. No, he eats his he eats his bologna with peanut butter. So you guys can have you know the nastiest mm. sandwich combination just sitting next to each other, and I will go over and don't, I will. Just... Don't be yucking my yum. You should try it. <laughs> <laughs> it's good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I like my marshmallows with peanut butter. Okay, where's the chocolate? That's like a fluffer nut or sandwich or whatever, yeah. right? Yeah, my kids like that. And strawberry. Oh man, yeah. Make pudgy pies. Okay. <laughs> okay, Adrian. You don't know what a pudgy pie is? 
No. no what I'm is wrong with you? I don't need that stuff. It's <laughs> just two pieces of bread, okay, placed in this like griddle cup, okay? And you, it's like cast iron, or if it's old school, it's cast iron. And then you place your bread and you place like your peanut butter and your jelly and say some marshmallow and you put, you know, you close it and you heat it over the fire and it closes it and it makes it, it grills it, it cooks it and it melts it all into like this nice, like, like it's like peanut butter and jelly crustables. Gooey like, yumness. Yeah. <laughs> you can do your eggs that way. You do your toast, you know, you put your bread in and you put your eggs and I'm all, you put your eggs. I talk <laughs> to my hands, I'm sorry. You put your eggs and you know, your, your omelet fixings and then you. There was a name for that and I can't remember what it was. Pudgy pies. No. Oh, no, no. <laughs> it, was not it was that, but. Trust me, I was pudgy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I ate too many. <laughs> <laughs> little Debbie's. Everybody's like, oh, hostess. I was like, little Debbie's still around. Okay, Adrian, what do you have for us? All right, let's see. Okay, so my mom died when I was eight. I've raised nine kids and I eat yogurt with my peas. If you eat yogurt with your peas, once again. What? <laughs> You do, don't you? Oh, that's so nasty. You got to figure it out. No, your mom died when, no, didn't your mom die when, give, give this to me again. Okay. My mom died when I was eight. I raised nine kids and I eat yogurt with my peas. Come, Come on. on. Nobody eats yogurt with peas. I know people who eat yogurt with peas. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> people, geriatric people. <laughs> People don't that anyways. That needs um, oh but, man. Prove my geriatric <laughs> my teeth out at you. Is that what I need to do? Well, you know what? I'll be right there with you. Give me another year. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> Just pop those bad boys out. We can go back to where I'm down. We'll chase after Jen. <laughs> don't you dare. <laughs> oh adrian i don't know this one is hard um it's your mom i think that it's your mom too i feel like she you were quite a bit younger when your mom passed i, I don't know though that's i'm a little that's not the lie my mom did die when i was eight why do i feel like you because because of the adoption, my first mom that's right. and the it's second one fair. died. No. Okay, okay, um, okay. Then it's the nine kids. It's the kids. Yeah, right. I raised eight. Okay, you Lisa. eat yogurt with peas, though. Come on, Hungarian. Oh, yeah. Yep. Is is it See, flavored this is yogurt? Church. Is it yeah. flavored yogurt? No, Greek. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. It's a Bulgarian okay. thing. <laughs> okay. All right. I I I can see that. Like I was thinking that you just like get the yo play, like the strawberry yo play, and open it up and put peas in there, like something <laughs> and stir it up. And I was like, nobody does that. Nobody <laughs> does that. <laughs> you were like at least strawberry. I was thinking like peas. Yeah. Like, no. no. That was my first thought. I don't know why. Eat some peas, huh? Well, okay. All right, Greek yogurt. I got it. <laughs> well, because people eat cottage cheese with peaches, you know. Yeah, yeah. I do. I, I like do. That. And pineapple. I don't think I eat anything strange. Mm. Yeah. No, it's things you don't eat that are strange. Like what? You can't have spicy stuff. Well, man, don't talk about that. You live in New Mexico. <laughs> oh, well, let's not talk about that. Hatch, I swear. Hatch, it's been blowing the wind and ha all the hat chili's grown in hatch. And I'm sitting here like last year, you know, during harvest season going, mm, I'm fine. Mm, I'm fine. Mm, I'm fine. You know, we went down, Jesse took us all down to hatch to go, you know, just walk around town. And he's looking at me, chasing me around with the Benadryl. You need some? You need some? <laughs> breathing okay? I was eating queso the other night and he's looking at me like, are you 
And I'm like, the next day I'm all, huh, I got a blister. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's the peppers that do that. You don't like the hot the cat, peppers? The cats, 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 yeah. Yeah, there's something with it. I don't know what it is. And melon, fresh fruit. <sighs> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Abby, 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 like for her birthday, she wanted melon. So I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, I need somebody here to cut up this melon for me. I can't do this. I can't do this. And I'm like, okay, I'm sucking it up. I'm doing it. I cut the melon and I got juice on me and I hived just straight. Really? Up. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah. It's really bad. I think I'm developing the allergy to nuts. I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> you do this to yourself. <coughs> Just because I can sit down and eat like a whole thing of nuts in a day doesn't mean anything. Just because I sit down and I drink like a whole thing of V8, you know, and then cry because I want more doesn't mean anything. <laughs> It may not mean anything to you, but it might to your toilet. Uh, no, listen, I had to stop drinking V8 juice when I was pregnant with Abby. I was afraid she was going to pop out orange. I promise you. I promise you, it was bad. And it all started because I didn't tell my dirt team that I was pregnant. Instead, I walked up and I said, I need a virgin Bloody Mary. And the bartender looked over at me and he goes, you mean tomato juice? What are you, knocked up? And I said, yep. I said, I want tomato juice. I want a virgin Bloody Mary, please. And he just started laughing. I'm like, I want all the dressings, just no, no vodka. <laughs> now, now, if you have a non-alcoholic vodka, you need to put it in there. I need a placebo drug right now. <laughs> I love V8. So do I. I could drink a lot of it. I can see that. See, I thought Jen was going to go with something like completely way, way, way back in, in the past. I could. <laughs> I was like, come on, Jen. Like, give us something challenging. I did give you something challenging. Yeah, raspberry and freaking grilled cheese. <laughs> raspberry <laughs> jelly to digest. It's raspberry jelly. Raspberry jelly. No. Oh. Um, yeah. I could give you something. I'll give you something from the past. Um, but you have to give me a second to think about it. How much do I want to, to divulge? <laughs> okay. What is the craziest thing you've ever done with a friend? How, how, how about let's go with that? Um, the craziest thing I've ever done with a friend. You too, Adrian. Oh, you do. No, we can talk about it. No, we can talk about No, okay. I was going to say, you don't want to go there with me because I was a little crazy. <laughs> um i guess we can talk about that yeah it's okay all right i don't know i really wasn't that crazy honestly i really wasn't that wild of uh now but if my mom's watching she's gonna disagree with me but i really <laughs> i really wasn't <laughs> I think the craziest thing that I probably did with a friend, I will tell you this, is that we went to Vegas and we were, um, I don't know, this was maybe 15 years ago. Um, her and I would go to Vegas. Well, we would go to Vegas every single year, but we went to Vegas and somehow, some way I got lost. Um, we were walking like on the strip. Somehow we got separated and I don't remember what happened, but I just remember I was wearing this Jen would make fun of me because it was the, the short little dress and the high heels, right? It was the typical, like, I'm in Vegas night, right? And I remember stepping, I remember stepping out of the casino and just telling myself, like, it's okay. I can just walk to the other casino. Somehow I got lost and I found myself off of the strip in this really, really scary, like, seedy part of town. And I was terrified. And so I, I got on my phone and I was trying to call her. I couldn't get a hold of her. And I, and a message came through and you guys, this is so weird. It was a message from 
uh, a kid that I had gone to high school with and I hadn't talked to him for a, a long time. And he just said, what are you doing? And I was like, oh my God, I'm lost in Vegas. And he's like, what? <laughs> he was so sweet. He stayed on the phone with me, um, found me a ride, found me a cab. Uh, like I was telling him like the street signs, I was kind of telling him where I was and he got, and he stayed with me on the phone until I got back to the hotel. Um, I know that doesn't sound very crazy, but it was super scary. Like I was terrified. Okay, that's, 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 there was all these creepy, scary people. So that was probably one of the scariest situations that I found myself in was just, I don't know. I, well, I, I do know how we got separated now that now that we're talking about it. I do. Know. <laughs> You're like, I remember. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> uh, yeah. She was actually at the hotel room when I got back there. Very, very sick. She um, actually somebody had put uh, roofies in her drink uh, and she somehow made it back to the hotel. That's how we got. So she, that was it. She'd gone up from the show to go to the bathroom and never came back. And we ended up being separated. So that was probably like the most scary, like crazy thing. Um, and I'm so naive. Like I would hear of those things happening. Right. But you never think that anything like that's going to happen to you. It's going to happen to your friend. Um, so that was scary. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, what's weird is those moments like that, though, when people like get a hold of you, like friends, like just out of the blue, like. It was super weird. Yeah, it was. Yeah, everything's so strange. For a reason. He might have protected you because you were on that phone. Somebody's not going to approach you with you being on that phone. Right. And he made me stay on the phone. Um, and he was like finding out where I was. He was calling a cab to come and get me. He was getting me to the hotel. And he stayed with me until I got back in the room. I'll never forget that. It's funny too, because I hadn't talked to him for years and years and years. And it was just one of those random, hey, I was thinking about you. What are you doing? Well, I'm wearing short dress and high heels and I'm lost in Vegas. <laughs> what have you been up to? <laughs> you know, one of those moments. <laughs> one of the craziest moments I think I ever had with a friend, we all went down and we saw a hypnotist. Mm. I tell you what, I was. I just had knee surgery, <laughs> so I probably shouldn't have been like drinking. It had been a couple weeks or it had been a while after my knee surgery, but I probably shouldn't have been out drinking. Um, I was actually still on drugs. This is when my nerve disorder started happening. We didn't quite understand what was going on. So I was still on some painkillers and I had a half of a drink and he, this guy comes on stage. And then the next thing I know, I'm on stage like two and a half hours later going, what happened? Why am I the one up here? I wasn't the one that went up. You were the one that went up. <laughs> she said, How did I? And she looked at me. She was Janice, you were gone. He said, stand up and you stood up and you were gone. I was like, oh man. <laughs> she goes, I didn't know what to do. She's like, I was just standing there going, uh, uh, She's going to kill me. Oh, she's going to kill me. This is recorded. This is, she's going to kill me. <laughs> but she went and she bought a whole bunch of the, a copy of the, that, that show. And she, she gave them out to people randomly. Ah. Oh, I no. Yeah. Yeah. As proof. And then I didn't realize that she had bought those. And next thing I know, I came into, she, uh, she was staying with me at the time. And I always had a whole bunch of people with me. So living with me. Uh, a whole bunch of kids and whatnot. So next thing I know, I, I come home from grocery shopping and everybody's just looking at me and I walk into the living room and there I am on the largest TV in the house in this dress and high heels. And I'm, I'm talking like eight inch high heels, short dress, delivering a baby on stage. I'm on my knees complete sweat delivering a child on stage completely gone like because i know what i'm doing i was like move over this person's having a baby i'm completely hypnotized i have no idea 
And I didn't know, yeah. I didn't know obviously what I had done because I didn't watch it and I didn't yeah. want anybody telling me what I did on stage. Like, mm -mm. So then I'm sitting there and I'm cutting up vegetables and all I hear is my voice yell, where's my backup singers? <laughs> and then you hear me singing respect and dancing like Aretha Franklin across the fucking stage. <laughs> I, I lined everybody up to be background singers back. Yeah. Oh, it was bad because you know, I knew what I was doing. It was music. I was working with music. Like don't, don't mess with me. Like, see, yeah, I don't think I could be hypnotized. Yeah. That's what I said. Does a cow oh, go move? I just don't know if I could. Does a cow go move? <laughs> Try it. <laughs> well, what does a fox say? <laughs> ring, ding, 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 ding. Thank you for I that. don't relax enough. Like I I have a really hard time relaxing. I really do. Uh it takes a lot for me when I, you know, meditate or try to relax. It takes a lot. So I don't boy, I don't know if I really could be hypnotized. Let's go. We're doing it. <laughs> not not something like that. <laughs> I would maybe like let a professional hypnotist try it, but not in a show. <laughs> no. Come on, Adrian. Oh, I'm down. I don't care. You're down? See, no, I have this thing. Like, okay, see, this is the I, I have this, I have this vision of the three of us walking along like small town, like small town streets and being like, oh, there's a palm reader. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this person's a psychic. Hmm. Yeah, let's let's go. <laughs> <with them>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's go have some fun. Let's go have some more fun. Let's go mess with people. <coughs> when I, I really wanna... would like. Um, I think it really would be kind of fun, though. I would like to go see, uh, like a medium, somebody that doesn't know anything about me. Yeah. I think it would be really, really interesting to see, you know what what came through, like how they worked and what, what came through and, and would they know that I was a medium? Like, I just think it would be really fascinating and really interesting. And I think that they probably, if they were a medium, I think that they would know. Um, See, I don't know. Cause I feel like I know that when I'm reading people, you know, I can kind of tell um, if they're, if they're a little bit deeper, if they have that psychic or that medium thing, like I can feel that. So I, I would be curious. I would be really curious to know. See, like I knew, well, obviously I knew when meeting you, Jen, that you were, you were me, we'll just say energy worker. Cause I just call us an energy workers. We just uh -huh. work your minds. I knew that you were obviously, I, I, there's no denying it because you were brought into the situation. Adrian, on the other hand, Adrian, I don't know, like when, when the, here, here's back to the friendship thing. Like when we formed our friendships, I mean, like with Adrian, I knew right away I was going to be Adrian's friend. Look at her. She's going to laugh because we have to talk about <laughs> it. Oh, because the story's hilarious the way she says it. <laughs> Did it not happen that way? Yeah, but I, I did not. not. No, you can't. I, I literally ran over to her and I'm like, oh my God, I love you. <laughs> and she's like, what? I'm like, I'm going to be your best friend for life. I said, you just don't know it yet. And she's like, okay, whatever. You know what Adrian <laughs> she's like, a weirdo. Like, she's a freaking weirdo. And I looked at her. I said, you don't believe me? I said, watch this. I said, I'm going to pee all over you. That was the part. <laughs> That was the part. I'm marking. I'm marking you. Doc <coughs> Martin's territory. Nobody. Nobody's getting near you anymore, baby. You're mine. <laughs> that that and really happened. Are. And here we are. Here we are. Like she did not. She she had no freaking clue. You know who I was, what I could do. I walked into the room. I locked eyes with her, and I'm like, "You're mine, baby." <laughs> No, I, I, I'm sure oh, no. you remember the way I was with Adrian in the beginning. And Adrian's like, oh, my God, I don't know. But I think I love her. I'm so scared, but I just want to love her. Oh, I got to give you shit. 
But I mean, with Jen, it, ours is a little bit just, it's ours is different. Ours is a weird kind of friendship because you're born, you're, we're, our birthdays are the same day. Yes. You're just born before I am. But we're born, what is it? Tw- no. How did that work? Because I was born at 302 a.m. Uh, Like six hours. Yeah, it was six hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah, six hours difference. And I swear, because we're both Pisces, that plays a lot into our connection. But for some reason, there was no... So that's why I said it like with us, it was different because Adrian, I knew I couldn't let Adrian in completely with the way that I worked with energy at first. Cause if I did, she would have just wrote me off. She would have thought I was nuts. <laughs> oh no. I think that would have happened at the bar if it was going to happen because I'm standing there and she's doing her job and I'm looking at all my friends that I've known forever and I'm going, what is happening <laughs> act that I'm not in on or something really bad is happening that I'm not affected by any of it. So I'm just standing here going, okay. Right. And then when we were at the temple and, and we were in the theater room, Adrian was like, you guys are nuts. You guys are insane. Like how, what the hell is going on? And then everything changed. And then, yeah, she she was able to understand that I wasn't crazy. Um, but with with you, Jen, I let my guard down right away. Like, I don't think I was going to be able to hide from you who I was. And it wasn't even just I knew I wasn't going to be able to. I didn't want to. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. It was just... Yeah. Because I think that there's always, it's like I was talking about earlier. I think that there's like maybe that, that deeper knowing, um, that that there might be a time that we would, that we would need each other in another way. Does that make, does that make sense? Like, I don't know. I feel like when we meet people that there, there is this knowing and it's, it's subtle and it's a very subtle. I know you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's subtle. It's, I I don't know how, I don't know how to explain it, but I guess I don't really need to explain it, (laughs) but there's a shift. There's a shift that happens. Well, that's 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 like meeting, that's like me with meeting Adrian. I just knew, I just knew. Yeah. Like I knew her. Um, and with you, I knew you, like there was no, there was no, uh, there was not like that familiar. It was, no, I know her. Like this, this has resonated somewhere before. Yeah. Like this is, this is solid. What is going I mean, on because- with your thing behind you, Jen? It, I don't remember seeing that white in it earlier. Is this I'm not you? sure what it is, to be honest, right here. Yeah. I don't know. My window oh, is, okay. it well, might I- be coming through my window. Um, Cause as the sun moves down, it might like be creeping through the, one of the cracks in my curtains. That's what it is. Cause when you put your hand up there, I can see the light. Then yeah. Too. It's gotta be coming through the window as the sun's just moving, but that's weird. Cause the curtains are shut pretty tight. Like I always try to keep that from happening, but it's gotta be what it is. So seriously, I think all in all, If people like, what is your best advice to somebody who's looking for a friend? You know, who, I don't know. I think my best advice to somebody who's looking to, to make a a lifelong connection, because that's, this is what this is. Actually, I do believe, like, I don't believe, I know, I feel that this connection between the three of us is more than just this lifetime. Man, advice, like that's kind of hard because I guess it just kind of depends on what I think that we all have a different definition of of friend, right? Like what mm-hmm. like what do you want this person to be in your life? I think is the first thing that you have to figure out. Um oh well, is it what what you want or what you need? 
well, that's it. Like, I think it's what you need. And I feel this is like the same with even just relationships. Um, sometimes, sometimes when we shift, okay, let me put it this way. We, we generally have in our mind, we have um, a picture or we have a, a thought of what this person is going to be like, right? Of what this person that we want to come into our life is like, whether it's a friend, whether it's a romantic relationship, we kind of have um, an idealization of what they're going to be like. I think that we have to drop that. And I think that we have to look outside of the box. Uh, I think that we have to be willing to not compromise our core values on what this person is going to be like. But we need to comp we need to be able to, you know what, they may not look exactly as you think that they are going to look like. They may not live where you think that they're going to live. Um, they may, there may be some things about them that you're like, I I would have never imagined myself being friends with this person, you know, down the road, like that. So you have to be willing to let some of the um perfection of what this person is going to look like go again we don't compromise the core values right obviously they we want them to be um Trust, they, loving, yeah right, right. Right. yeah all of those things we never compromise on those things um but but we we have to i, I think we have to start looking in places that that we wouldn't expect. And we have to let that idealization go. That's where you're going to find that person. I would have never thought in a million freaking years when I was brought uh, in to do a show, what what has it been now, two years ago? Yeah. Two years ago, um, that I would have formed the friendships that I have formed with paranormal investigators. I was the last thing, like I was not a paranormal investigator. I'm a medium. I don't know crap about your ghosts and your stuff. Nothing. Like I learned, <laughs> but right. it's yes. not a place. Let me put it this way. It's not a place that I would have looked to be able to establish a bond with somebody. Um, it's just not, it just happened that way. So the expectation of, um, of what this person is going to look like has to go where they're going to come from. We have to be open to all of our options. See, when I throw it to Adrian, I just look at Adrian and go, Adrian, did you ever expect to end up with me? <laughs> right. <laughs> My advice is stop looking. Yeah. yeah. Let it happen. Just exactly. And don't judge, you know, everybody just stop looking whatever it is you're looking for, it's going to happen when it's supposed to with who it's supposed to. And you're not going to be able to do anything about it. You know, that friend might be just some, it might be that coworker that you just might not like. Mm -hmm. That's happening. I, I, know, I know that sounds crazy, but that coworker that you, mm -hmm. you might not like because they're too honest or they're too brash or they're too harsh. Yeah. You might need that in your life. Yeah. In fact, it's not a might. You do need honesty in your life. Everybody sugarcoats everything. And I think that that's. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I, I start the beard club and these two ladies get to stir up the beard. Well, I'm not jealous. I'm not jealous. You I love it. But I happen to be there to be able to do it and video it for you and go, hey, hey look what I'm doing. <laughs> and now that video is on TikTok. Oh, no, no, no. Jen sent me a picture. She she sent me a picture. I have a picture of her stroking oh. Jeremy's beard. <laughs> that sounds so bad. <laughs> well, guess what? I get to this weekend. Eh. <laughs> What I get to do this weekend? Oh. I get to do what I do every weekend. I get to be a mom, and I get to cook, and I get to clean. I get to redo a house, and I get to I can do all that too. Nice. All right, ladies. Well, it's been an hour and a half. 
I think I'm going to hop off here. Speaking of feeding my family, cooking my fam, cooking, not cooking my family, cooking for my Oh, family. how are we cooking them tonight? <laughs> what? How are we cooking them tonight? Medium rare? <laughs> well then. Hey, you know, Abby tells me I can't eat her anymore because she has blood and bones. <laughs> like, what am I, an ogre? Are you an Englishman? You know, like, what is going on? You know, are we on Drury Lane? Do, do you know the Muffin Man, too? You know? She's what? so funny. She's crazy. <laughs> She's right. She looked at me. She goes, no, Mommy, I just got Daddy Finger. And I'm like, oh, Mommy Finger, too, right? And Baby Finger. <laughs> and... Okay. And um, I'm going to go eat my cake that I made with um, Betty Crocker frosting. Oh, yeah. Don't be judging, Jan. We don't do that here. I am <laughs> judging. Breathe. I am judging. Breathe. I made the cake, though. I made the hummingbird cake you talked about. I just. We are just, not Betty Crocker. We do not want to <laughs> be Betty Crocker. That's right. Okay, that's it. Okay, I'll make a hummingbird cake. You guys plan the date location. I'll bring the food. I'll cook for you guys. Okay, <laughs> All right. I can be your Martha Stewart. Do you want me to decorate too? I mean, you know, step aside. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Don't be judging the frosting. I know a quarter of it's already gone, so it must be good. It's going to be you good. You break it out, Karen. <laughs> Kids, hurry up. Let's go. Say good night. <laughs> Mom's getting off. Hurry up with the cake. <laughs> All right. I love you, ladies. Love you. Good night. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.